What is going on everybody? The 2021 NFL Draft is officially done, and that means it is time for me to grade the drafts of all 32 teams. It's been really fun these past few days seeing everything unfold, and a lot of teams did really well, so I was a little bit more stricter this year with how many high grades I gave out since there weren't many awful drafts. Without further ado, let's get right into the fun. I will be showing each draft in order of how I rank them pretty much, so we're starting with the best and we're going down to the worst. I only give out one A-plus every year, and this one was really tough. I guess for context, I've been doing draft grades for, what, six years now? In 2016, I gave my A-plus to the Jaguars. They ended up with Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, Yannick Ngakwe. A lot of those players aren't on the team anymore, but overall, I think I kind of got that one right. 2017, I gave it to the Saints, completely nailed that one. An all-time great, great draft class. Guys like Marshall Lattimore, Ryan Ramchek, Alvin Kamara, Marcus Williams, Trey Hendrickson. I completely hit that one out of the park. And then after that, I have not done as well. 2018, I gave it to the Broncos. Bradley Chubb and Cortland Sutton were both good picks. Uh, 2019 was the Bills. I think I really whiffed on that one. And then last year, I gave it to the Baltimore Ravens. A little bit too early to tell, but we'll see. So I was down to two teams on which to give my A plus two, but I've decided to give it to the Chicago Bears. I've been very critical in recent years of Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, and if I was running the ship in Chicago, I probably would have fired them by now, but the Bears ownership has kept them around, and I guess it paid off because they hit a home run in this year's draft class starting in the first round. They were aggressive, they traded up to 11, and they got Justin Fields, who's my QB3 in this class. I would have picked him at the third spot if I was for 49ers. So getting him, even with that haul they gave to the Giants, I think it's absolutely well worth it. I understand they gave up a first-round pick next year, but at the end of the day, Justin Fields is a franchise quarterback, and the Bears have not had anybody that talented under center in a long, long time. They traded up again in the second round for Tevin Jenkins, who I'm not as high on as some. I think this is around the range where he belonged, but I think that's a good move for them. They needed to address the offensive tackle position, and they got a really good one in Jenkins. And they had a strong day three as well. Khalil Herbert, Daz Newsom, and Thomas Graham Jr. were all really good value picks. So overall, a phenomenal draft class by the Chicago Bears, and they destroyed draft weekend. So massive props to them. The other team I considered for my A-plus was the Cleveland Browns. They had another really, really strong draft, starting with Greg Newsom at 26. He was my third-ranked cornerback in this class. I'm super high on him, and I think he's a great player. But he's not even the highest-ranked player of mine they selected. Jeremiah owusu koromoa was a top 15 player for me in the class. He was my second highest graded defender, only behind Patrick Sertan the second. So I'm very high on JOK. I don't know how he fell out of the top 20, let alone the top 50. And the Browns moved up for him at 52, so just a home run, first two picks. After that, it went a little bit downhill, but they still did solid. Anthony Schwartz, I thought, was picked a little bit high, but he's fast. And then they had a strong day three as well. James Hudson, Tommy Togiai, they were good picks. Uh, Richard LeCount, not super athletic, but I do like him. And then Demetric Felton, really interesting player at 211. So overall, a really strong haul here for the Cleveland Browns. And I think that on paper, their roster you could make a case for might be the third best in the league behind Tampa Bay and Kansas City. Another front office I've been very critical in recent years of is the Philadelphia Eagles. Howie Roseman is not someone who I view as a good drafter at all, but the Eagles dominated this year's draft. They moved up two spots with Dallas to select Devontae Smith. I thought that was an awesome move for the Eagles. It was clear the Giants were going to pick him at 11 had this move never happened. So the Eagles went out, got their guy, phenomenal move. Day two, I thought, was solid. It wasn't outstanding. Uh, Landon Dickerson at 37. I think he's a good player. I think Creed Humphrey's a little bit better, but Dickerson is super talented, provides a lot of versatility, has the medical question marks, but he's really good. Milton Williams, really a interesting pick here in the third round. He's super athletic, super high ceiling, but he does have a low floor. But day three is really what pushed this grade up for me. They dominated on day three. 
all six players here are in my top 200. They drafted three top 100 players of mine on day three in Kenneth Gainwell, Jacoby Stevens, and Patrick Johnson. Johnson's a major sleeper of mine. I really like him. And then Marlon Tui Pulotu was very close to my top 100. So that's six players ranked in my top 100 in total, nearly seven. And then Zach McPherson and Teron Jackson were both in my top 200. So just a phenomenal draft here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Hats off to Howie Roseman because I was not expecting them to do this well. The Kansas City Chiefs also get an A grade, and the Orlando Brown trade does not factor in. I'm not factoring in any moves made before the draft, but I did think that was a really good move by Kansas City. In the second round, they had two really solid picks, Nick Bolton at 58. I'm not as high on Bolton as some, but I think that's really solid value for him. And then Creed Humphrey at 63. How in the world did he fall this far? I had him as a top 32 player in the class. Had the Chiefs not made the Orlando Brown trade and picked him at 31, I would have viewed that as a good pick. They also had us drawn day three. Cornell Powell out of Clemson's a super high floor player. He's going to be a contributor in this league for a long time. He's one of the older players in this class, nearly 24 already, and he doesn't have a super high ceiling, but I think he's going to be a really solid receiver for a long time. And then Trey Smith, a guy who I really like. I think I had him as my 100th overall player. Talent-wise, he's even higher than that. The medical stuff is definitely a major concern. But at 226, outstanding value for Trey Smith, who I think is one of the more underlooked players in this class. And he's someone, if he can stay healthy, who could be a really good pro for a long time. So a phenomenal draft for the Kansas City Chiefs. They are rightfully the heavy favorites in the AFC right now. Now we get to my favorite team, the Detroit Lions, and I'm really happy with how he did. The first draft for new GM Brad Holmes and new head coach Dan Campbell. And let's just say they were not lying when they were looking for kneecap-biting mentality here. Really focusing on the trenches early, Panay Sewell at 7 is the right pick to make. There were a few other players I would have been happy with. Devontae Smith I'd be cool with. Justin Fields I would not have been upset at, although I would have been very surprised. But Panay Sewell was the right pick there. We were lucky that the Bengals and Dolphins both passed on him. And I understand there are bigger needs on this team than offensive tackle. But this is year one of a long rebuild. We cannot be focusing on needs. We have to go best player available. He was definitely that. Round two, a player who I think is one of the more underrated guys in this draft in Levi and Wuzurike, the defensive tackle out of Washington. Great selection at 41. And his pre-draft uh, press conference with the Lions, uh, he, he gets me excited. We'll put it that way. If you want to listen to it, uh, there are some explicit words said. But yeah, he's going to be really fun. Uh, Ayla McNeil, I'm not as high on as some, but again, I don't have a major problem with this pick. I think he's a really solid run stopper, high floor guy. Ifitu Melafanu at 101, I was pretty excited about. Tall, rangy corner, I think he's going to be fun. And then day three, I think we did pretty solid as well. Amon Ross St. Brown had no business of falling to the fourth round. I think that's a great pick. And then Derek Barnes and Jamar Jefferson were both solid value as well. So overall, a great draft here for the Detroit Lions. Maybe it's me drinking the Kool-Aid, but I have a lot of hope for this team going forward. It seems like year in and year out, the Baltimore Ravens have strong draft classes, and this year's is no different. Rashad Bateman at 27 was a steal. When the Ravens drafted him there, I was jumping for joy because I did not want him going anywhere near Green Bay. So I was very happy that he was not available for the Packers. I have Rashad Bateman, I think, 13th. On my overall board, I think he's an absolute stud, and he's arguably, I know this may sound crazy, but I think there's a legitimate shot that he might be the best receiver on the Ravens day one. I know those are strong words. I know Marquise Brown showed flashes last year, but I think Rashad Bateman has the chance to be the best receiver on that team very early on. And then Odafe Owe, formerly known as Jason Owe, I think he said he wanted to go by Odafe now. So, I guess we'll call him by what he wants. I had OA in the 60s on my board, but this is the Baltimore Ravens we're talking about, who have a very strong history of developing raw pass rushers. Jason OA, nope, Odafe OA, I'm not used to that. Odafe OA is an absurdly freak athlete, and if there's any team who I trust to develop him, it's the Baltimore Ravens. So, I think that's a good pick, even though value wise, it's a fairly significant reach according to my board. Day two, solid. 
Uh, ben Cleveland, I think, can be a starting level guard. And then day three, they, again, did really well. Tylen Wallace, really good value. Sean Wade is a very interesting player. At 160, I think it's fine to take a risk on him. So, overall, really strong draft here from the Baltimore Ravens. Year in and year out, it seems like they do this, and they did it again this year. My final A grade will go to the Minnesota Vikings. So, seven A grades total. I feel like that's a little bit lower than normal. Again, I decided to be a little bit more critical this year since there weren't a ton of really bad drafts. But the Vikings had the best first round of any team in the league. Christian Darasaw was the right pick for them to make it 14, but they traded down. They got two third-round picks from the Jets and still got Christian Darasaw at 23. I don't know how the Vikings pulled it off. Just incredible work there from Minnesota. They had four third-round picks. I think they did pretty well. Kellen Mond, I like that pick. Why not take a shot on a quarterback? He's a little bit raw, but Kirk Cousins is not going to win your team a Super Bowl anytime soon. So have Mond develop under Cousins. I think that makes a lot of sense. Chaz Surratt, solid. Wyatt Davis, I thought, was really strong value. Has some medical question marks, but when he's on the field, he's really good. And then day three, a lot of really solid picks as well. Kine Nwangu, I don't think I had him in my top 200, but the athletic upside does intrigue me. Uh, Janarius Robinson was really good value at 134. Amir Smith-Marset was really good value at 157. Jalen Twyman out of Pittsburgh is an interesting player. So overall, just a really, really good draft class here for the Minnesota Vikings. They're another team who seems to get high grades every year, but... They're warranted. Let's get to the B grades now. There are a lot of teams in this area between B plus and B minus, starting with the New England Patriots. Now, I've been critical of Mac Jones. I had him in the 30s on my board, and I've been on record to say the Niners would be making a massive mistake had they picked him at three. Well, Mac Jones was the best QB on the board here at 15, and New England does not have their long-term quarterback on the roster. Cam Newton just really isn't it anymore, unfortunately. So I don't blame them for picking Mac Jones at all here, and I think he'll challenge Cam Newton very early for the starting job, but I think that was a pretty solid pick. They had a strong day two, Christian Barmore. They moved up for him. I think that's a solid pick. I'm not as high on Barmore at others, but I think it's fair value at 38. Ronnie Perkins is an interesting player. I like his upside. I think I graded him as a fringe top 50 player. Ramondre Stevenson and Cameron McGrone were really solid day three picks. Joshua Bledsoe as well, one of my big sleepers. So overall, just a really solid draft here from the New England Patriots. I know Bill Belichick does not have the greatest recent history of drafting players, but I think they did pretty good this year. Let's talk about the New York Jets here. I did not take much into the Zach Wilson pick in this grade because he was really the only pick they could have made there. And if it wasn't Zach Wilson, that B plus would be a lot lower. So it gets them a little bit of bonus points. It pretty much turns a B into a B plus, essentially. They moved up for Elijah Vera Tucker. I don't think that's an awful move. I'm not as high on Vera Tucker than others, but he probably wasn't going to be available at 23, so I don't totally fault them. Elijah Moore, pretty solid value. Another player who I'm not as high on as others, but in the early second round, I don't really have a problem with that pick. Michael Carter, the running back Michael Carter, I think was a really good pick early in the fourth round. He's arguably the most talented back on the roster, and one of my favorite late picks, Hamza Nasir Ladin. I've been a big fan of him for a while. I was very surprised to see him go this late. I know there are some concerns with him, specifically medical, but overall, pretty good draft here for the Jets. It was a very interesting, but very solid draft for the Bengals. I gave them a B plus. The fifth overall pick was one of the more I guess controversial ones at the top with them selecting wide receiver Jamar Chase. In my what I would do mock draft, I did have them picking Chase over Panay Sewell. You really can't go wrong either way. If Sewell would have been the pick there and had they picked a different receiver in the second round, say like a Diami Brown, it probably would have still been a B plus. So I think Jamar Chase is a really solid selection at five. He's the best receiver in this draft class. Jackson Carmen at 46. They moved down for him. I don't think that's terrible value. I had Carmen as a fringe top 100 player, but I don't think that's a terrible pick. I really like what they did after that, though. Joseph Osai at 69. Nice. And it's actually a pretty nice pick. He's a little bit raw, but I really like his potential. Cameron Sample, Tyler Shelvin, both pretty solid. Deontay Smith as well. Trey Hill at 190 was really good value. And then Chris Evans, really late. I like that pick a lot. I think Chris Evans is quite good. So overall, pretty good draft here for the Bengals. 
The Miami Dolphins were in a very interesting spot with the sixth pick as well. I would have picked Panay Sewell over Jalen Waddle, but Waddle was the next best choice. I don't think that's a really bad pick at all. I like Jalen Waddle a lot. I think he's going to be a really good pro. And then Jalen Phillips at 18, super high ceiling player. So they doubled down on Jalen's in the first round. I think this draft could be a home run if Waddle and Phillips develop into what they could be. In the second round, I like both of their picks there. Javon Holland at 36, I think is really solid. I'm higher on Holland than most. I think he's going to be a really good player. And then Liam Eikenberg at 42, super high floor guy. I think he'll be a solid starter in this league for a long time. Hunter Long at 81 wasn't my favorite pick, but I don't think it's a bad one either. And then they won 150 picks in between Long and their next selection, which is quite a lot. So overall, a pretty good draft for the Miami Dolphins. I would have picked Pene Sewell at 6, and you could have got like Terrace Marshall with that second round pick instead of Eichenberg. That would have probably raised this up to an A. But still, pretty good draft for the Dolphins. Not a whole lot to really complain about. The San Francisco 49ers will be getting a B-plus as well. I thought Justin Fields should have been the pick at three, but I don't think Trey Lance is a bad pick. Trey Lance has a super high ceiling. I think Kyle Shanahan's really going to like working with him. And I never believed the Mac Jones hype. You'll be able to see throughout all of my mock drafts, I have never had Mac Jones going to the 49ers once. It just did not make any sense to me. I didn't really get that. Why would you trade so much? For a player who's athletically limited, like Jimmy Garoppolo, I think Kyle Shanahan wants to work with a player who has all the traits to be a superstar, and Trey Lance has exactly that. Aaron Banks at 48, I'm surprised he went that high. It's good to invest in the offensive line, although he's probably not the offensive lineman I would have taken there. Trey Sermon at 88, I really like that pick for the 49ers. I think he's going to be their early down runner. I think he's going to get their most touches right away, and I think he's going to be really, really solid. And then day three, they did pretty good as well. Demador, Lenoir, Talanoa, Hufango, both pretty solid value picks. So overall, pretty good draft for San Francisco. They didn't mess up the third overall pick, and they get a solid B+. The Los Angeles Chargers will also be receiving a B+. Many people are ranking the Chargers right at the top among draft grades. I don't think the Chargers had an elite draft. I think they had a very good one, but I don't think it's warranting an A grade. They did get two awesome selections at the top with Rashawn Slater at 13. He probably shouldn't have fallen that far. I thought that was a really good pick. And then Asante Samuel Jr. at 47 as well. Really strong pick there. After that, I didn't love it. Josh Palmer at 77 is fine. Trey McKitty, I think, was taken a little bit too early. Their day three wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. So I think a B-plus is fair for the Chargers. I think they had a really good draft, but I don't think they had an elite draft like a lot of people are saying. My final B+, plus, I know a lot of B-pluses here, will go to the New York Giants. I did not expect Dave Gettleman to trade down, and, well, he actually traded down twice. They moved down to 20. They got the Bears' first-round pick next year, which could be pretty high. So I thought that was really solid value, especially with their guy Devontae Smith going. They picked Kadarius Tony at 20. Probably not the pick I would have made. I'm not as high on Tony as others, although I think he'll be a pretty good player. So I think they had a solid first round. Again, not the player I would have taken, but they got really good value for pick 11. Aziz Ojolari at 50 is a steal. I think he dropped because a lot of medical concerns really came out about him the past week specifically with his knee, but that's a steal at 50. There's no reason he should have fallen that far, even with the medical stuff. Aaron Robinson, I think, was a fine pick at 71. Ellerson Smith is an interesting player with potential. So overall, a pretty good draft for the Giants. I wish they got better value with the 20th pick in the selection itself, but they got a really good haul from the Bears, got a future first-round pick, and Aziz Ojulari at 50 is excellent. Kind of like the Chargers, the Carolina Panthers are another team who are getting super high grades from people. And again, I think they had a pretty good draft, but I don't think they had an elite one. J.C. Horn at 8, I think is a fine pick. Not the selection I would have made. He was my second ranked corner, but I don't have a major issue with it. They had a great second round, though. Not only did they move back quite a lot, but they got Terrace Marshall, who's a steal. I had Marshall 20th on my overall board, so just a great pick there at 59. He had no business falling that far. Then after that, I think they could have done a little bit better. I think this is where people really start to overrate their draft. Brady Christensen at 70, not a bad pick, 
but I'm not as high on him as some. Tommy Tremble as well. I think I had him in the 150s on my board. I'm just, I, I just don't believe in him as much as a lot of other people do. And then day three, they did fine. Chuba Hubbard, not bad at 126. Davion Nixon was pretty good value at 158. Another guy I wasn't as high on as others. Uh, Deontay Brown at 193, I think, was pretty good. So overall, a solid draft from Carolina. I love Terrace Marshall in the second round, but it's not as good as people are making it out to be, at least in my opinion. The Denver Broncos will be receiving a B grade as well. Denver did a really awesome job of getting great value with most of their selections. Patrick Sertan was my number one overall player on the board at nine, and I usually won't get mad at teams for picking great value, but Justin Fields was right there. The Broncos have a good enough roster to where they're not going to be able to get a player as talented as Justin Fields again, unless they have some sort of massive trade-up. So, as much as I love Sertan, I think he's great. Just not the pick I would have made. Justin Fields fell right into their laps. They did have a really strong draft after that. They moved up for Javante Williams. I think running back is a bigger need than people give it credit for. I think Melvin Gordon is fine, but I think Javante Williams has a chance to be better right away. Quinn Miners at 98. I think that was a pretty good pick. I'm not as high on him as, than others, but that's strong value. Uh, Baron Browning as well, another player who I'm not as high on as a lot of people, but at 105, I do like that pick, and they had a pretty good day three as well, Caden Stearns is interesting, Jamar Johnson was really good value, I think I had him in the 50s, Seth Williams pretty solid, Jonathan Cooper as well, so a pretty good draft for Denver, but had they picked Justin Fields at 9, this probably would be an A or an A-. The Tennessee Titans love their high-risk, high-reward players early, and this year was no different. They had a grand slam with Jeffrey Simmons a couple years back, but they also took a big swing to miss last year with Isaiah Wilson. This time, it was Virginia Tech cornerback Caleb Farley, and the medical stuff with him is really concerning, but the upside is off the charts with him, so I get why they did it. Not the pick I would have made. I had a higher grade on Greg Newsome. I think he would have been a better choice here. Rashad Bateman would have as well, in my opinion. But the upside with Caleb Farley was really hard to pass up, so I get it. Dylan Radunes at 53, I think, was pretty good value. They need a right tackle with Dennis Kelly going. I think he was probably the best tackle on the board. Monty Rice, Elijah Molden, solid day two picks. And they had a pretty good day three as well. Uh, Des Fitzpatrick is solid at 109. Rashad Weaver, pretty good. Racy McMath, Brady Breeze as well. So overall, a decent draft for the Titans. Not great, but not bad either. They get a solid B. The Jacksonville Jaguars will be getting a B grade as well. And this is kind of like with the Jets. The Trevor Lawrence pick does not do much to the grade here. Had Trevor Lawrence just been scratched off and the Jags did not have the number one overall pick, this would be a B-. I don't want to up it too much, but yes, Jacksonville made the right pick, but it was the only pick they could make, so I don't want to give them too much credit for that because anybody with a pulse would probably pick Trevor Lawrence at one. After that, solid, not great, not bad. Travis Etienne at 25 is really interesting, and I don't have a problem with them adding another running back because James Robinson in that backfield is not enough. You need someone who's more explosive and can make plays out of the backfield as a receiver, and I think Travis Etienne can complement James Robinson, who's more of a tough, bruising runner, really well. But you went 1-15 last year. The first pick you should be making other than quarterback is not running back. That's the only problem I have with that. So again, not a major issue with the Travis Etienne selection, but I think positional value could have been used a little bit better. But getting Trevor Lawrence, someone he's comfortable with, I don't think it's a bad pick, just probably not the pick I would have made. Tyson Campbell at 33, he's raw but has a high ceiling. Walker Little as well, also very high ceiling. And same can be said about Andre Sisko. So if all these players pan out, this could be a historically good draft class for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They drafted a lot of super high ceiling players. Jordan Smith as well, another guy who's raw but has a lot of potential. So if the Jags can develop these players correctly, this could be an A-plus in three or four years down the road. But a lot of these players also have very low floors. This could also be a D draft in a few years with Trevor Lawrence being the only really good pick. So I'm going to give it a B, but I think in five years the grade will be very different. Whether it's higher or lower, I don't really know, but it's going to be a lot different. <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks entered this draft with only three picks. So again, pre-draft moves are not taken into account here with these grades, and the three selections, I overall give them a B-. 
Dwayne Eskridge was a guy I was not as high on as some, but at 56, I think it's fair of value. I think this is a pretty good fit. Terrace Marshall was on the board now. I think Eskridge is the better fit in Seattle, but Terrace Marshall was like 70 spots higher on my board. So, not the best pick they could have made there, but not the worst. Trey Brown at 137 is fine. That's probably right around where I had him. And then Stone Forsyth at 208. A lot of people loved Stone Forsyth. They viewed this as one of the biggest deals from the draft. I had Forsyth in the 160s on my board. I just don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. He's still pretty raw, and he is one of the older players in this draft class. So I don't know why people viewed him as a second and third round pick. I just didn't get that. But at 208, I don't really have a problem with that. I think that's solid value. So overall... Pretty good draft for the Seahawks. Not the best, but not the worst either. Very interesting draft here by the Buffalo Bills. I like Gregory Rousseau. I think he's fair value at 30. I know a lot of people are skeptical of him, but I think he has a super high ceiling and could be really good. They picked a very high floor pass rusher in the second round with Carlos Basham. I don't have a problem with that. If Gregory Rousseau doesn't work out, you have Basham, who I think is going to be a productive player in the NFL for a while. So getting a high ceiling guy and getting a high floor guy at the same position, that's fine by me. Spencer Brown at 93, he's raw, but he has a lot of potential, and he jumped through a table after he got drafted, so he's meant to be a Buffalo Bill. Their day three was fine, I like Marquez Stevenson, DeMar Hamblin, Rashad Wild Goose, pretty solid value. So overall, not a bad draft, but again, not a great one in my opinion either. The Indianapolis Colts will be getting a B- minus as well. I think Quiddy Pay was a fine pick at 21. I would have picked Christian Darisol. I mean, he could be your starting left tackle for the next decade. He's right on the board with Sam Tevy currently as your left tackle. I don't get why they passed on him, but I think the next best choice you can make a fair argument was Quiddy Pay. So at 21, don't have a major problem other than passing on Darisol. Dayo Odenbo in the second round is really interesting. I think he's super talented. But he tore his Achilles in January. He probably won't play this year. So you're really taking two big swings at the edge position, hoping one of them pan out, which I think there's a good shot one of them will. Fairly uneventful day three. I like Kylan Granson at 127. That's fine. Sam Ellinger at 218 is really interesting. I don't have a major problem with that. So overall, an interesting draft here for the Colts. There's probably different picks I would have made at certain spots, but not terrible either. The Washington football team will also be getting a B-minus as well. Jamin Davis at 19, I don't have a major problem with, although probably not the pick I would have made there if Jeremiah Wuzugorama was sitting right on the board. But I guess I was a lot higher on JOK than the league was. Uh, Sam Cosby at 51, I think, is a pretty good pick. They needed to shore up an offensive tackle spot. Benjamin St. Juice, not bad at 74. Diami Brown at 84, what a steal. One of my guys, I've really liked him throughout the draft process. I had him as a top 50 player, so really good pick there. And they had a fine day three as well. Dark Force at 163, not bad. Shaka Tony, interesting player. And they drafted a lawn snapper with the last name Cheese Man. So that'll get some bonus points for me. Overall, solid B- minus for the football team. We have left the B range and we are entering the Cs. And this is where we get to some of the not as great draft classes. The first C-plus would go to the Arizona Cardinals. I don't think they had a bad draft, but I don't think they had a great one either. Zayvon Collins at 16, a little bit high for me, but not bad. He's a good player, but I just wouldn't have picked him that high. Rondell Moore at 49 is one of the most interesting picks in the draft. I had him at, in the 70s on my board. I think he's a massive risk, but him in this Arizona offense is going to be so much fun. So I don't have a major problem with that pick. I think he's going to be really fun there. And they had a pretty good day three as well. One of the better day threes, in my opinion. Marco Wilson solid at 136. Uh, Tay Gowan at 223 is great value. James Wiggins as well at 243. So they definitely bumped their grade up a little bit on day three. Not a terrible draft, but I don't love their first two picks. So they get a C+. Plus. The Atlanta pick at four has been one of the most interesting ones throughout all of draft season for me. And I've been saying they should pick a quarterback. With Justin Fields there, he would have been my pick personally. Not Ryan's a good player, don't get me wrong, but he's also 36 years old. And kind of like Denver, I don't think they're going to be bad enough anytime soon to be in a position to get a guy like Justin Fields. Had they not picked Fields, my next option would have been to trade back. I guess there weren't any takers. And the best football player on the board there was Kyle Pitts. So I don't have a major issue with that pick. Not the guy I would have selected, but he was the number two overall player on my big board. So 
I don't have an issue with it. Kyle Pitts is going to be a stud. Richie Grant at 40, I'm not as high on him than others, especially with Traylon Murray right there staring them in the face. So not the pick I would have made, but not terrible. Jalen Mayfield at 68. They have him listed as a guard here. I think that's probably where he's going to be best at the next level. I think that's fair value for him. And they had a fine day three, not great. So overall, they get a C plus. I think a lot of people are going to think this is low, but just not my favorite draft in my opinion. I've read a few different draft grades so far, and it seems like the grades for Dallas are all over the map. They've gotten very high grades from some people, they've gotten very low grades from others, and I get it. This is one of the more interesting and more polarizing drafts, so they got screwed with their first two picks, because at 10, J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertan made a lot of sense. They went the two picks right before them, so I do give Dallas a lot of credit for not panicking and trading back. I think they recognized that Devontae Smith was going to be in their division regardless. So A, you might as well add a third round pick. And B, if you're Dallas, you would rather Devontae Smith on the Eagles than the Giants because, well, the Giants are the better football team. So I don't hate what they did in round one. Micah Parsons at 12 is fine. He's my number two linebacker in the class behind JOK. So they got pretty unlucky with the two corners falling and they handled it well. After that, in round two, again, they got screwed because the Raiders traded up for pick 43 and picked Trayvon Murray, who made, would have made a lot of sense for Dallas at 44. Instead, they picked Kelvin Joseph, who's a solid player. I wouldn't have picked him that high, but he's decent. There's a common theme of a lot of these picks. A lot of these guys have character concerns. If you're a good player with character concerns, welcome to Dallas. Micah Parsons and Kelvin Joseph were two players towards the top of this draft class who had character issues. Josh Ball as well as a lot of character question marks. So it seems like uh, Jerry Jones is not worried about character at all with these picks. They had three third rounders, and I don't love what they did. I really like Oso Digizua, though. I think he's one of the more underrated players in this class. But Chauncey Golston at 84 is a bit high. Nishan Wright at 99 as well. That one kind of came out of left field. Jabril Cox at 115 is interesting. He really slipped. I had him at 40 on my board. I really like him. I think that was a good pick. Israel Mugwamu as well is really interesting too. So overall, a very polarizing draft here for Dallas with a lot of the low characters for some of these guys. So not terrible, but I wouldn't call it great either. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have one of the best run front offices in the NFL, and Jason Light and company have done a phenomenal job the past five years of drafting, and that's why they won a Super Bowl last year, because their roster was so good head to toe. But, based on my evaluations, I don't love this draft class. Joe Tryon at 32, I think, is fine. I'm not as high on him as others, but I don't have a major problem with that pick. I don't like Kyle Trask at 64, though, and I'll, I'll explain why. I get that Tom Brady's 43 years old. I don't hate that they're investing for the future, but if you want to draft a quarterback who has potential to be a long-term starter, Kellen Mond was right there who has far more upside. Davis Mills as well, I think, would have been a better pick. And I think Kyle Trask can be a fine backup for a while, but I would not have used a second-round pick on him, and I don't think Kyle Trask is going to ever be a high-end starter in the NFL. I think the Bucs should have gone for a more win-now pick there, so I didn't really get that. Jalen Darden at 129, I do really like just adding even more firepower to their offense. So, not a great draft of the Bucks. I do have some questions, but their roster is really good head to toe. So, it's not like they had really many needs to begin with. John Gruden and Mike Mayock have done it again. It seems like their criteria for first round draft picks is four year starters at big name colleges who have second to third round talent. They do this every year. They did it with Cleland Furrell in 2019. Uh, they did it last year with Damon Arnett. And they do it again with Alex Leverwood. Leverwood is not a bad player, but this is just the most Raiders pick like ever. And their offseason's been a disaster. I've really soured on John Gruden and Mike Mayock. I don't think they know how to run a football team. That's just my opinion. They had a good second round. They, they moved up for Trayvon Mulrake, who's really good value. And then after that, it kind of goes downhill again. Malcolm Kuntz and Divine Diablo, not terrible. I'm not as high on Diablo as others, but I guess they were both top 150 players for me. Tyree Gillespie at 143, I do like, but just not a great draft here by the Raiders. They have not done a good job at all of drafting in recent years. And really, the only first-round pick I like 
of the Gruden and Mayock regime is Henry Ruggs, who still has a lot of questions to answer in year two. So, just a very questionable draft by the Raiders. This draft could have been graded a lot lower, though, had they not gotten Mo Reagan in the second round. Another team whose grades seem to be all over the map is the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think they had a terrible draft. I don't think there's any one pick early that's, like, really bad. But I just don't think there are any really good picks in here either. Najee Harris, for me, is the best running back in the draft. They have a massive need at running back. Najee Harris is far and away the best one on that roster now. But their offensive line is pretty bad. So you need to have guys blocking for him. In round two, Creed Humphrey was staring you right in the face. And they picked Pat Fryermith, which again, isn't terrible. He was my best tight end on the board. And obviously, I'm not the biggest Eric Ebron fan. I think that kind of goes without saying. But Creed Humphrey was staring you in the face. So I don't know how they passed on him twice. I thought Creed Humphrey would have been a better pick at 24 than Najee Harris, put it that way. They got Kendrick Green in the third, not a terrible pick. I'm not as high on him than others, but he's versatile, can play guard and center. And they didn't have an overly exciting day three, although Quincy Roche at 216 is pretty good. So just not a great draft here for the Steelers. For offensive line, concerns me. The cornerback room also concerns me a little bit. They didn't draft an edge until day three, which I don't have a major problem with. I like Alex Highsmith. A lot of people seem to have forgotten about him, but just not a great draft here by the Steelers. Oh boy, the Houston Texans. Where do we begin here? So let me make a few things abundantly clear. One, them not having a first or second round pick does not hurt their grade. That was a very bad move at the time to trade for Laramie Tunsil. It looks like an even worse move now, but that doesn't have to do with my grades. Number two, I get Deshaun Watson will never play a game for the Texans again. I get the legal situation with him is very serious, and I understand that once the legal stuff gets resolved, assuming he's still an NFL player, he's not going to want to play with the Texans. I get that. But picking a quarterback at 67 is just so stupid. Davis Mills here is the worst pick in the entire draft by any team, and it's not particularly close. I understand Deshaun Watson's not ever playing for the Houston Texans again. I get that. But this is pick number one for a new regime. Your roster is absolutely garbage. You need to build on the inside out, kind of like what the Lions are doing. So why do you pick a quarterback here? I just don't get it. You have so many needs on both sides of the ball, and you pick a quarterback. How is Davis Mills supposed to succeed here? He has very few talented players blocking for him, very few talented players catching passes from him, and very few talented players on the defensive side of the ball. They have to address their needs first before getting at, at, going after a quarterback, and it's not, like they dire, it's not like they desperately need a starting quarterback this year. Tyrod Taylor is fine. So, I just don't get that at all. I don't have a problem with the player. Davis Mills was my number one QB on the board, but just picking quarterback there makes no sense. Then, the Texans moved up from 109 to 89 with the Panthers, and they gave Carolina the house. I think Carolina got two fours and a five, which is just awful value. So, at that point, I was thinking, I might have to give this team an F. This is a disaster so far. But then they redeemed themselves. They ended up picking Nico Collins with that pick, who I really like. I think I had him in, in the top 40 on my board. He's one of my favorite players in this year's draft class. So I figured after that pick, hey, I won't give them an F. Brevin Jordan is good value at 147. Garrett Wallow is good value at 170. So they get three really solid value selections. But the quarterback thing just still makes no sense to me. Had they picked someone else there at 67, this grade would be a lot higher and I really like three of the five players picked here by the Texans, but choosing a quarterback just makes no sense to me. The New Orleans Saints will be receiving a very poor C-, and we're really getting into the range of the bad drafts. Peyton Turner was my lowest-graded first-round pick by a country mile. I think I had him in the 80s on my board, so just not good value there. I think Turner's a good fit. A lot of similarities to Cam Jordan, and I see that. Turner, uh, he started his career in Houston in the middle of that defensive line transition to edge. He has the size and versatility to play inside and out. So I understand the Cam Jordan comparisons, and play-wise, again, there are some similarities between them. But I just, 
that's too rich for me. I wouldn't have used a first-round pick. If they picked Turner in the second round, even though that wasn't great value according to my board, I wouldn't have had a major problem with it. Pete Warner in round two, that's fine. Again, not great value. There were better linebackers for me on the board, but not terrible. Paulson Adebo is really what turned this draft around for me. I really like Paulson Adebo. I think I had him as my fourth or fifth corner. I think he was I think he was actually cornerback number six on my board, but still really good value. I had a top 50 grade on him. I think that's really good. Ian Book is interesting. I did not have a draftable grade on him, but I see the resemblance of Taysom Hill. This is tiny Taysom. So overall, a pretty rough draft for the Saints. This would have been my lowest graded draft had Paulson Adebo not been their third round pick though. A D plus kind of feels harsh here for the Rams but I don't think they really got great value anywhere. I like Tutu Atwell, but I just think that's too early. He's just too small to go in the second round. I understand why the Rams picked him. He's going to be a really fun player in the NFL, but I just would not have used a second round pick on him. Uh, Ernest Jones at 103. That was too high as well. They had some solid day three picks. They took some really athletic flyers in Robert Rochelle and Jacob Harris. Those were two big swings for the fences. They are both freak athletes, but... Both very raw. Bobby Brown at 117 wasn't terrible. Jake Funk is interesting in the seventh round. So overall, just not a great draft for the Rams. They could have some of these athletic freaks pan out, and this grade could be a lot higher. But this has the chance to be one of the worst uh, drafts in the entire class. My lowest graded draft in the entire class belongs to the Green Bay Packers. Now I know what you're going to say. Octi, you're being biased. You absolutely hate the Packers. This is why you're giving them a low grade. Ugh, we had a really good draft. Aaron Rodgers wants out. That's not our fault. I get that. But this is still not a good draft at all, in my opinion. Eric Stokes at 29 isn't terrible, but he's raw. And he does not convince Aaron Rodgers to stay. So, not the worst pick they could have made, I guess... But it's not a good pick. And that's the common theme of a lot of these selections. Josh Myers as well at 62. Not terrible, but Creed Humphrey was staring you right in the face. Amari Rogers was a good pick at 85. I do like that one. But they just did not have any necessarily good picks other than Amari Rogers. I do like Kylan Hill a lot in the late seventh round. That was a good pick as well. But the reason why some teams like the Saints and the Texans and the Rams were a little bit higher than Green Bay is because they all had at least one pick that I really liked. And I can't really say that about the Packers other than 256, which is a seventh rounder. So they didn't have any just glaringly awful selections and maybe I'm being a little bit harsh, but there just wasn't any pick here that I think is really good. So that's why I give them a D plus. That's why they get my lowest grade. All 31 other teams either had a really balanced draft or they had one pick that I really liked. So that will do it here for my 2021 draft grades. I know controversial. I know there are a lot of things that people are going to disagree with, but this is my opinion. And in five years from now, I might be very wrong. We don't know. This is all speculative. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. And as always, have a good one. I'm out. Peace.